I'm Vin. I'm sorry. And this is Attitude from the band Sepultura from the album Roots. This is for... Overshadow Sean. The big homie Overshadow Sean. Shout out to the big homie. One of the best and the brightest lights in the universe today. Overshadow Sean. For timely topical political commentary, you can hit us up at Middle America with Vin and Sorry. Uh, we, this is probably the most controversial video we've ever shot on Middle America. Yeah, probably. I think. Uh, this is one of those ones where you lose subscribers, but I don't do that channel for that, so. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to you that leave and return. <laughs> uh, Sepultura. There are multiple ways to get your song reviewed, dead listener. My favorite way is a community option. One dollar to get to you in a Patreon, where you get to uh, meet the great Ian, among other folks, and then you get to hang out. And the best thing is you pull your points together with your fellow villagers in an alliance, and that determines what songs that we do. Now, if you're a filthy capitalist like Sorry, and you don't want to do that, and you want to hop, skip, and jump straight to the head of the line... 125 gets you straight to the head of the line, and uh, that is what the big homie Sean did. You do that three times, you get bumped down at a $75 rate. He said and he picked the live video because the show was pretty crazy, and if you were there for it, it like stuck with you. I love live shows, so inshallah, this is heavy. Ready? Uh, wait, wait, oh. let me get my lyrics. Let me get my lyrics. Overweight. And now we're going. Go. Allahu Akbar. You just Allahu paused it. You literally just passed it. We are Sepultura for Brazil! That's interesting.
fun watching you <clears throat> recognize that that riff huh yeah. dun, 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 dun. I was like hey ah <laughs> 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 uh, but that was 96 you're allowed to do that in 96 bro 98 98 is when the, it took off and all the bands sounded the same and even though like they had the kind of riff that uh, the corn influence riff like mm -hmm. they had a completely they had their own sound like it was still you know muddy sludgy but they had their own sound and it was just he has like, you, he was rocking when he was playing the little... I don't know what the hell that's called. But he was rocking when he played that instrument, whatever it the hell that like instrument a, was. It looked like a fishing pole. <laughs> well, yeah. No, I'm with it. I'm with it. And I, I, I want to... I'm like... What's the name of that song again? Attitude. 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 Live. And where was it? Ozfest. <laughs> Did you hear him? He's like, fuck the alternative music. This is the real shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's I how we were. That's how we were back in the day, bro. That's how we were. We were like, man, fuck all yeah, that boy. shit. None of that shit is real, bro. I can, I can understand. <laughs> and then, and then uh, all the like old school metal helps are like, man, that shit you listen to isn't real metal. Blah blah blah. I was like, man, fuck you, bro. This is real shit. Come see it. <laughs> That's ridiculous. And uh, I tried to, the song that we are on and in, in the band that we're in. I tried to, I tried to write a new metal song because mm -hmm. you know that, those are my roots. And then my other guitarist is like, bro, this is not a new metal song. I felt like a failure. But then, they were happy. Yeah, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the drummer was happy. Empty, please. The drum no, I don't even please. Fuck all of you in the band. The drummer was happy. The 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 other, you know, Jay was happy. Everybody's happy. It's not a new metal song. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> I didn't know they didn't want it to be new metal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I, did, I don't think they want. I, I don't think. Uh, suck it up. You'll be all right. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't think they wanted. Uh, I don't think they wanted it to be a new metal song. So. Yeah. Well. Try to add some new metal elements into it, and it just didn't work. So, and you know what I think it is is like I was doing all that scale work. You know what I mean? And you know, just to get my dexterity. Yeah. And just because I was trying to, you know, whatever. And so then when I started actually trying to write a song, like you know, obviously I defaulted to that. That's what I've been doing for the last two months. And then you know, unfortunately, it's not a new metal song. I'm like. Sorry guys, if you're hoping, I, I'm sure like a lot of people were like, oh, I expected you to do a new metal song, mm -hmm. but then when they heard the opening riff to the song, they're like, that's not new metal, bro. And they're like, I'm pleasantly surprised. Fuck all of you. Hurt my feelings. Aww. Huh? Yeah, but this song was crazy. The atmosphere was crazy, like right from the beginning, man. Yeah. Like right from the beginning. He was like hitting mm -hmm. it and like his dreads are going everywhere. I'm like, yo, this song. He kept that to, energy. It's about to pop off. And again, this is one of these songs where lyrically, straight to the point. I'm trying to find what this freaking instrument is. Nobody says anything about the instrument in the comment section. <laughs> Nobody knows. Well, I think Nobody it's because knows. a lot of these people are actually like Brazilian, so they actually know what the instrument is. So they're, oh, you know maybe. what I'm saying? Like, shout maybe. out to I'll shout out, shout out to Brazil, shout out to Brazil. Uh, okay, so what did you think was going on lyrically? Uh, hold on, I'm pulling it up. Uh, 
Oh, I, I didn't actually really look into the lyrics a whole lot. Again, I, I just thought it was just basically about, you know, like, surviving and, like, F this if you have to, you know, like, just that sort of attitude, the, the attitude of, I don't know. What? A just... kind of metal attitude <clears throat> where you're just like, you know, F this, F that, like, I don't know. And then at the end, the attitude where he said, like, you know, industrial stuff. What did he? What, how? What did he, he didn't say, say industrial? industrial. He, he said, said uh, alternative. Yeah, alternative stuff. That, like that. Just like that attitude that he had at the end. It was like I thought the song was just that. I don't. I don't know what was happening in like the rock music world in 1996. You know, we were just coming out of the homeless shelter and moving into the Bronx in '96. So I was deep, deep into Mace and Biggie and yeah. Pocket just died. So I, I don't know what he's referring to when he says alternative, but I'm sure. It, it's music that wasn't heavy. <laughs> like, um, one week struggling in the real world is so you can see. Feel your soul and shape your mind to warfare. It's all for real. So, that's an interesting phrase, the real world. That's a phrase you hear a lot when you're a teenager and you're sort of in that in-between period where you're, you're no longer a child. But you're not yet an adult. Yep, the kids hear it from me. <laughs> and so you have certain perceptions of how the world yeah. works that are extreme. They're very simple. Yep. They're very binary, and you think you got it. You like you got to figure. I, I remember like, I remember like, I was beefing with my mother so bad, and I remember thinking to myself, "Man, fuck this, bro. I'm just gonna go, and I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna sell drugs." When I sell drugs, stack up some money, I'll get an apartment. Me and Reef will get an apartment. Fuck all shit. I don't need her. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I, I didn't know you had that. Uh... Oh, of course. What do you mean? What do you? Of course. Like, you, you, you'd have drug dealers and stuff, and they'd be, like, coming to school in, in Gucci and all this. And, yeah. And, and, and then they had cars. Yeah. And that was a big thing. It's like, oh, you still take the train to school. Blah, blah, blah. You take the bus to school. I got a car. I got a car. Mm -hmm. But I never cared about that because I was like pretty confident in saying like as far as like my uh, my uh, powers of persuasion. So I didn't care about that. But like when it was like got to the point where like it was impossible for me to live with my mother. Uh -huh. Where I was like, yo, I'm and you know, I'm not going to go into like detail here. But like I had good reason to believe that. Uh, mm. Like I could possibly die in there, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, well, I'll just go sell drugs, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I didn't, I didn't want any of the clothes or whatever, whatever. Mm. So I didn't care. I was like, I would just go sell drugs, and I'm like, oh, I'd do that for like a couple weeks and stack it up, right? And then I'll graduate school, and then a couple more weeks of that, and then you know I'll get a job at Burger King because I'll have all this extra money. I'll be able to finance myself, blah blah blah. <laughs> so I went to school, and. Uh, mm. One of my mans was, uh, we were at lunch, we were chilling. This is a new story, I've not heard this one. And he's like, uh, yeah, man, I was really fucked up, blah, blah, blah. I was like, what happened? He's like, yo, I was on a 12 bus. And I was like, yeah? He's like, at the stop, because the bus has a route, Yeah. there are these two bodies on the ground, and the cops were just, the, the cops had just arrived, and he knew one of those guys. And he's like, yo, I just talked to bro, Two days ago, he said he was getting out the game. Like, he was not going to drug deal anymore. But he had one more pickup, and then he was done. And I don't know what happened, because honestly, I never got into the drug thing. But apparently, like, people, the, the main supplier, because it's basically like a pyramid scheme. I'm talking out uh, of complete ignorance now. It's basically like a pyramid scheme, and, like, the main supplier, like has other people under him and you have other people under you and whatever whatever and so like the mid-level guy oh you know you you're basically the the mid-level guy is always in debt mm -hmm. so he's always driving around with these cars and these clothes or whatever and the the low-level guy also has cars and clothes and whatever because they all live in public housing <laughs> you know what i'm saying they're all in the ghetto and they have such a silly mentality that they're not gonna i should suck for a lot but they, they, they have a slave mentality, so they're, they're still in the ghetto, but they're going to spend a few dollars they have on all this and that. Well, the mid-level guy is not rich, but he can get out of the ghetto. And it's basically, you can live in Rockaway, and then, and then you know, it, it expands, you know what I'm saying, like to where you can live. 
Yeah. But anyway, the mid-level guy is always in debt to the upper-level guy. So when the low-level guys want to quit, that's like X hundred whatever whatever a day or whatever that he's missing. And so he has to make an example of those guys so that nobody else gets gets oh any gosh. weird ideas. So these dudes got bodied right there. And the 12 bus just did its regular route because what are they going to do? It's not like the cops are going to talk to the MTA and, you know, and say, hey, don't bring your bus over here. Like, so, so he saw that happen and he was like shell shocked. He was just like, oh God. because it wasn't like dudes were getting shot every day. It wasn't yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Like, people got cut very frequently. Cutting, that was very frequent. Um, Yikes, man. Wow. But. And you would you would hear gunshots like I'd be at my girlfriend's apartment and you would hear pop 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 you would hear it all you know you'd hear it all the time, um, and then you'd be at the bus stop and be like yo niggas bussing like it was like a, you know, but like oh, seeing people get shot was an event like yeah. I look at some of these. He Chicago, saw them get shot or he saw he saw the aftermath. I mean they were they were you know like I always say like people don't just. They don't get oh, hit they and they completely dead yet. Right. They, yeah. People don't get hit and you know. But anyway, and like, of course, everybody around us because we're all supposed to be cool and hard and mm-hmm. tough guys. I was like completely silent. I was wrecked. Everybody else is like, "Yeah, that's what you get, nigga. That's the game, bro. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have your own gun, blah blah blah." Everybody's talking all this shit. I'm like, "Nigga, you don't have no gun. Like, what are you talking about? Like, wow. we were just in a rumble last week. You couldn't even." Like, but here you are, that is, like, that was, like, a moment, like, a real-world moment for me, like, yo, like, I had no idea that that was a thing. Like, I had no idea, because from what I knew, all the drug dealers and all the, what, they were all in their little crew, and they all got along, and they would flash their money and all that, like, I had no idea that this dude, dude, that you would, yeah, he's like, yo, I was with those guys, like, they... They was always throwing parties, blah, blah, blah. They were partying together. Everything was all cool. And Gosh. you could tell he was really traumatized because he was trying to figure out how could something like that happen. How could somebody how could you party be in your face yeah. like that and then yeah. go and, and just kill you in the street and yeah. broad freaking... This is the morning. Like, he was on the way to school. Wow. So, uh, man, it was it, it was like a real... That was that was a that was that was a very it's weird. Like I actually I've seen people shot. Like I've seen I've seen them on the ground and they're you know whatever. But it didn't affect me because those two dudes had beef with each other. So I'm like, well, I mean, they had beef with each other. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it was it was like, holy shit, these guys, these guys are some bad motherfuckers because they came to our block, and our block was not a nice place to be. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. But I was like, yeah, but they had beef, and you know, we yeah. were little, we yeah. were little kids, you know. But that's what they all, y'all, some little niggas, because we never got into any of that shit. Me and my friend Marcus, like, we never got into that stuff. So I didn't feel like I was ever like in danger. You know what I'm saying? But this one was just like so weird to me because these dudes were partying with each other, and I didn't know that type of treachery. Like, I didn't understand. You know, you know I, I still don't understand. I mean, how can you understand something like that? Yeah, but, yeah. But I remember thinking to myself, like, yeah, yeah, this shit is so simple, huh? You're just going to go drug deal because you can't live with your mom? Okay. And then, oh, I'm going to stack, and I'm going to say, hey, Mr. Uh, supplier, uh, you know, my plan was to, you know. And I could do that plan out real quick. Oh, uh, yeah, because I'm like, I would have been dead because I would have had no clue. Because apparently the other guy was like, I don't know if we should be doing this, man. And the guy was like, nah, nah, we're good, blah, 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 blah. So I would have been that guy. You know what I'm saying? The other guy was like, mmm. Because he was like, oh, y'all want to, uh. Apparently he said, oh, that's okay. Can you just do one more uh, brick, what they called it, or whatever? I, I don't know. All the rappers were talking about bricks at the time, so I don't, I don't know. That, but apparently that's that's a lot. That's thousands of dollars worth of drugs or whatever. And, uh, yeah, so that was, like, a real, like, rude awakening, man. That was, like, a real, like, no, you ain't, you ain't doing it. Is like, that when that song where it says a brick a piece capiche? Yeah. Is that what they're talking about? Yeah, I got 100 bricks, 14, 5 a piece, enough to cop a 6 by a house on the beat, supply a piece of bricks, a brick a piece capiche. Yeah, so he's getting $14,500. I don't know if that's, like, the running price, but that's in, the, in Biggie's song, that's what it was. But, yeah, everybody, oh, I flip bricks, blah, 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 blah. So... Like, that was the thing. 
again, we didn't know we didn't know any of that stuff. We were rapping it, but we didn't live that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Like most of us did not live that lifestyle. The drug dealers in the school were few and far between, and you knew who they were because of how they dressed. Mm -hmm. Like that was it. But it was like a real survive the jungle, give me blood, give me pain, these scars won't heal, yada yada yada. It's like wow. It's like uh, you know, and I thought to myself like. You know, everybody else was trying to stunt and act like they didn't care, but I cared. They was like, yo, what's wrong with this nigga Vin, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm like, what do you mean what's wrong? I'm like, these guys are fucking dead. What are you talking about? It's like, yo, you know them niggas, man. Who cares? Blah, blah, blah. But that was like one of the few times like I didn't feel like even projecting any of the bullshit false machismo that we all... I, I went along with it most of the time, but that time I was just like... Mm -hmm. It really affected me because I was like, yo, that would have been me, bro. Like, I'd have done wow. that shit. Because I... I would have always had designs to get out of it. Like, they would never be, you know. But while I was in it, I I feel like I would have been a very good one. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I'd have been made a, making a lot of money. So, yeah, I didn't... Jeez. Yeah, I don't talk about that one a lot, because, like, to this day, like, still, it's, it's still, uh, uh, still difficult. Yeah. Because they were trying to get out, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they were trying to... You know, I, and it was the, both of them, and they both decided to get out at the same time. So I used to think to myself, like, did they, had they, like, stacked up a certain amount of money so that they could go and open their own business? Because that's, that's what they call washing the money. Like, you, you, take, you, you use it towards something legitimate. And I'm like, you know, were they happy? Did they have a girlfriend that they promised that they were done? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many things. How old were they? they uh, I don't know. Because I, I, I had no idea who they were. You know what I'm saying? My friend knew who they were, but. But in New York, every there's so many like different pockets of people that you can. It's not like here, like everybody knows. Like even, you know, like somebody got shot at Walmart here like two two years ago, and I Google the name. Stabbed it. I Google the name, and I knew exactly who the guy was because everybody. Yeah. But in New York, it's not like that. Like yeah. there's so many little pockets of people. So. So yeah, like that was that was the thing. Survive the jungle, <laughs> you know. What were you thinking? What a wonderful world. You're full of shit. <laughs> Leave it behind. They don't care if you cry, and uh, all you have left is pain. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what it was like. And and I was I was kind of really upset at my friends too, man. I, I was upset at the attitude because I was like, you know, like. Yeah, it was a survival skill for them, though. Yeah, they, like, it, yeah, exactly. And I was just sensitive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm sure that they were hurt by it, too, just in their own way. And, you know, quite frankly, if you get tore up about everything that happens during that time period, then you, you, you'll never be... Every, you know, when they talk about jungle and survival instinct, like, everybody had to come up with their own little coping mechanisms to go to school, <laughs> get out of bed in the, in the morning, like... That is so scary. You, you can't you can't dwell on that shit, and and you you just take a gamble and you just you know, and you know it was just one of those things where I was just like, I was just like oh, at some point you just have to be like well it could happen today but you know, you you accumulate street smarts over the years mm -hmm. when you hear, it's like when somebody gets shot in Maine, it's completely different than somebody getting shot in. In where I came from. Because, oh, I believe in that. Maine, I feel like if somebody gets shot in Maine, you're like, I don't think to myself, well, I gotta make sure that doesn't happen to me. Exactly. So in Maine, it's like, holy shit, so and so got shot. Who shot him? Oh, ba ba ba. Oh man, that kid from this street over there. Blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah. Blah. It's just a, like a. But where we live, it's like, what did he do? Where was he? What hood was he in? Yeah. Did he have anything on him? He was out there by himself with nothing on him. Blah blah blah. And immediately people start saying, oh, and they'll, they'll try to blame the person. Because it gives you some sort of sense of control. Like, he, oh, he fought, he did something wrong. Like, that dude that got shot up at, at, in our neighborhood, it's like, yo, how you, you, he had just come from this dude's girlfriend's house. It's like, come on, bro. Like, mm -hmm. You just came from this dude's girlfriend's house. And of course, he's going to be running up on you, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. She probably set him up, blah, 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 blah. So, like, everything is like, when you hear about something happening, everybody does some, like, some weird debrief. <laughs> and yeah. so that everybody can convince themselves yep. that it won't happen to them. Right. And right. like that's a jungle mentality. And like from an outsider looking in, it's like, oh man, these are some callous sociopathic kids, but that's not what's happening. It's everybody's full of fear. And everybody's scared to death. And I don't care how gangster P 
people say that they are. Like, and that's why, like, my gosh, I don't, you know, there's not a lot of things anymore that make me afraid, but that's not because I'm a tough guy. It's just because, you know, <laughs> like we were walking today, and we're taking our walk, and then the, this car full of dudes just randomly stops. Right beside us. Right in beside the dark. us. And I got you, my pregnant wife, and I'm looking like dead at the dude, and I'm like, this motherfucker gets out of his car. Because, because, there was a situation a couple, you know, day, weeks ago. Yep. And so, I'm here, I got That's you. That's true, I forgot about that. <laughs> I did, you're like, you're you seven, eight months pregnant, I got this dude, I'm like, okay, he's about 16, 18. I'm like, oh, this guy's probably something. He's a driver and a passenger, but then yeah. the back door opened. Yeah, the back door opened, so I, I said, this nigga comes out of his car, bro. And I was like, and, 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 you know, and I'm glad we started talking about our stuff afterward because I was very disappointed in myself. Because, and you were like, oh, I'd like to see what was in your mind, blah, no, blah, blah. Because I knew that you went from zero to 60 really quickly. I was thinking, what? Like, if you have an entire road and there's two people walking and you stop your car right beside the two people walking and open up your car door, why would you do that? That's stupid. Like, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't put people in that situation where they feel like, yo, go a little bit ahead, a little behind would be fine. And so for me, it was just, you were perfectly quiet. And like, I was like, if I could have seen on a screen, yeah. of course, I probably wouldn't want to. But I'm saying like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I always pray none of those situations happen because. But, you know, it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that, that this song is like a real, this is like a raw, real life type mm -hmm. of song. You know what I mean? Like, this song, when I first started getting the metal, I was in New York. Like, if I would have, if I would have found, if I would have known this song, I would have been, I would have blasted this song till the tape wore out. Like, because that was the mentality, and it's not, and it doesn't matter from the hardest gangbanger to the nerdiest kid. Mm -hmm. That's everybody's mentality. Mm -hmm. And it's a it's a it's a freaking sad way to live, bro. Yeah. It's a yeah. real sad way to live. So uh, you know. God bless the dead, I guess. What do you get the song? It's a ten for me. Oh yeah, it was a ten. It's a good song, it was heavy. It, it was. It was fun too. Uh, moral of the story is don't roll up on somebody at night. And then, and then, you know, don't do that shit. That's dumb as hell, man. You know, you're stupid. I love you. Vin out. Sorry, out. Down. We are Sepultura from Brazil.
show me your attitude. Why we're falling like 